Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through McMurray's test. And the purpose of this test is to look to see whether or not our patient has a tear of the meniscus of the knee joint. Now, just before we actually show you the technique, I want to mention that we're not going to be repeating the test on both the right and left legs in this video. We're just going to be uh, practicing the technique on our patient's right leg, and that's because we don't want to slow your video down. But of course, in practice, you always want to compare the two so you can clarify your patient diagnosis. So, let's have a look at the test. So, handling to start with, we're going to have one hand that's placed just at the very uh, distal femur, and it's going to be providing a downward compression force of the femur against the tibia, and that's so that we compress the meniscus during the movement. Now our lower hand, and um, there's different variations for this, the one that we like to try and practice is so that we have our forearm uh, resting against the sole of the patient's foot, and then we're lightly holding onto the calcaneus. Essentially, whatever handling you want to make sure of, it's that you can easily reproduce internal and external rotation of the tibia. The reason we like this one is because it doesn't allow for excessive movement of the ankle joint into inversion and eversion. There are other varieties. For example, you can uh, just have your lower hand around the calcaneus like this, or you can hold on to the distal tibia like so. We're going to show you this one just as this is the one that we prefer. So, here's the actual test. So we're going to be, in a second, we're going to be bringing our patient's leg from extension into a fully flexed position and then back into extension, but with a couple of differences. So the first thing we're going to do is bring our patient's leg into full flexion, then provide external rotation of the tibia. Now, just to clarify, when we're laterally or externally rotating the tibia, this is biasing the medial meniscus of the knee joint. Okay, so we're going to bring it into that full flex position, then we're going to externally rotate, and then we're going to extend the patient's leg down towards the bed, whilst we're using our upper hand to compress the knee joint as we go down, and we're going to bring it into full extension. We're then going to bring the knee back, and then we're going to internally rotate the tibia. This is going to bias the lateral meniscus. We're going to bring it into full flexion, provide that compressive force down with our upper hand, and bring it into full extension, like so. That's how you do the test. Now, there is a variation um, to this test, which we'll just show you quickly, which is that you bring it to the, into the fully flexed position, and then let's say we're going for external lateral rotation, you provide sweeping circular movements down until the fully extended position, and then you do the same by fully sweeping the knee into internal rotate, or the tibia into internal rotation as you go into extension. That is a, a, a variation you can use, but just bear in mind that sometimes when you're starting out, you'll find that you're really trying to, uh, ex you're trying to rotate the tibia so much that actually you've caused a lot of hip rotation, and so you haven't really isolated the knee joint. Your, a lot of your rotation is coming at the, at the hip. So let me just show you how that might look if you're really sweeping. You can see that the hip is coming into a lot of rotation rather than the tibia. So that's the test. Now a positive result in this test would be for a clunk uh, at the knee joint and that may well be indicative of a meniscal tear. As we said, when you externally rotate the tibia, um, that's biasing the medial meniscus, and when you internally rotate the tibia, you're biasing the lateral meniscus. One more point that I really wanted to mention to you that I didn't uh, mention a second ago is biasing which section of the meniscus um, you're, you're doing relative to the test. So for example, when you're in full flexion and we're providing that compressive force, this is biasing the posterior horn of the meniscus, either the lateral or medial, depending on which side we rotate the tibia. And as we come into extension, this is biasing the anterior horn of the meniscus. Again, uh, the medial or lateral will be determined which rotation we apply to the test. So a couple of additional points to mention about the McMurray's test that we commonly find in clinical practice. Well, it's commonly said by colleagues of mine that even when they've had a patient who has a confirmed meniscal tear after their MRI scan, they sometimes find that McMurray's test isn't positive when they expect it to be. So 
what other signs can we um, find that might indicate a meniscal tear to us? Well, one particular one is exquisite joint line tenderness and also specific joint line tenderness. What do we mean by that? So let's say our patient has a meniscal tear, the anterior horn of the medial meniscus, so in this kind of region. Uh, what we can do is turn the tibia into external rotation, as we said, that biases the medial meniscus, and then palpate specifically along the joint line. And if our patient has exquisite pain with a really big owl, for example, and it's at a specific point, then this might give us a clue as to the fact that they have a tear and perhaps where that tear is. The other things that can indicate a meniscal tear is simply during our range of movement tests. And actually, of course, when we're doing them at Murray's, we're moving from a fully flexed to extended range anyway, if we can. So when we're bringing the knee into a fully flexed position, you might find that our patient has a springy end feel. And a springy end feel means that you kind of move towards a particular point and then it springs back on you. It just doesn't allow you to go to where you want it to go as if there was, there was an element of a blockage or is a resistance there. Um, and it might well be that your patient doesn't allow you to go into full flexion anyway because the tear is stopping it. Whereas into extension, as we come down, if they do have a tear, you might find a very much blocked end feel um, where it feels like you can't go any further. And again, your patient may stop you going that far anyway. And if we think about it on our special, uh, on our special um, questions, locking is one of the main ones to indicate or implicate a meniscal tear. And I suppose that blocked feeling where it's not letting me go anymore or we've got into a position and we can't move out of it is where that kind of all comes together. Other things to mention is the patella. And a lot of the time we might go through this test and think, oh, we've just heard a clunk. That must mean there's a meniscal tear. Whereas actually what's happened is that the patella has flicked within the patella groove, which has caused that clunk and, we, and has clouded our judgment. So how can we try and get away from that? Well, with our upper hand that we use here to provide that compression against the knee joint, if we have one or two fingers just palpating over the top of the patella, we can feel as we go through the movement that if we've heard a clunk, we might feel for that patella movement so it can make sure that we don't um, find a false positive in our test.